All right. Well, good morning, everybody. It's 10 o'clock, so we'll get started right now. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Jeff Ramsey. Uh, I'm on a member of the Wellness Committee for TCOE. Uh, thank you for joining our virtual session on ergonomic awareness. Uh, many of you have seen Kyle Kaufman in our office before. Uh, he's a senior consultant with Keenan and Associates, and he's here to talk to us a little bit about office and home ergonomics while we're uh, trying to work through this pandemic. So Kyle, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Jeff. Hello, everybody, and a very pleasant good day to you, wherever you may be. Can we get to the next slide? Okay, so what is ergonomics? And ergonomics is a term that's used to, to describe setting up whatever kind of workstation for the worker to make him more efficient, him or her more efficient, more comfortable and healthier. Okay, keep going with this. So the relationship between office, between people and their office equipment is what we're gonna to talk today, talk about today. Next one. Okay, so what causes injuries? Um, it can be an existing injury that you've had for a long time. For me, it's my back. I hurt my back a long, long time ago. That tissue is damaged. It will always be damaged. And if I don't sit right and do the practice the, the correct ergonomic procedures, I'm going to pay for it. It can be bad habits. And I don't mean eating jelly beans. I mean, sitting the wrong way or putting our legs up on the, on the chair or doing something that causes us to get out of alignment using the equipment that we're using. It could be unwanted contortions. It could be your chair just isn't comfortable. So now you have to have to sit a funny way and that causes stress on whatever affected body part we're talking about. Trips and falls. If your office isn't set up right, you can, you can have a pretty significant trip and fall injury. And a lot of these get expensive. And then probably the biggest thing is repetition. If you have an existing injury that's been aggravated and then you repeatedly do the same behavior that, that causes a tweak to that, those tissues that are affected, that can, that can really lead to a significant injury pretty quickly. All right, so what are some of the signs? I'm kind of, I kind of repeat on this slide, the consequences of a poor workstation layout. So how many, how many of you guys think that this guy's sitting the right way at his workstation? Nope. Okay. So some of the things, if you could just go through this, Jeff, I didn't expect this to happen. So general fatigue and tiredness. And when we talk about that, it's not just what you feel like at the end of the day at work or, or the people that make you feel that way at work. It's when you're at home and you're just beat. You just can't seem to get caught up with, with sleep and, and you just feel tired all the time. Next one. Decreased productivity. Are you getting as much done? Are you distracted? You know, and it's not depression. It's not something else. This bad ergonomics could be something that helps, that promotes lack of work, I guess, for, uh, for lack of a better term and a better way of describing that. Next one. Inability to focus on a task. I got problems with that as it is. I don't need bad ergonomics to help me with that. Next one. Soreness, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit further in the next portion of this slide. Keep going, Jeff. The symptoms for soreness can include in your head, and a lot of times what that is caused by is the distance of your monitor from your eyes. That should really be, your monitor should be about an arm's distance away from your face. So if you reach out directly in front of you from wherever your, work, your seated work position is, you should be able to touch that monitor, okay? If it's too far away, it's gonna make your head hurt. If it's too close, it's gonna make your head hurt. Neck and shoulders. Wow, just there's so many different things that affect your neck and shoulders, especially with your chair. It's just something you need to be aware of. Um, the next one should be wrists and fingers. And that's what we're talking about here is your, your keyboarding and your mouse and maybe the distance you have to reach to to grab something. And then the last one is a lower back. And that's, that's where I'm injured. That's what I feel the most. 
And I, it's probably the most common thing that we get as far as an ergonomic claim at Keenan. Okay, next slide. Okay, so alignment. What we're talking about here, and let's, let's get all the pictures up on this slide. There should be one more, or at least words. What we're talking about here is what I want you to picture, this dime is about the size of your spinal cord, okay? And this nickel is about the size of the space in your spine where that spinal cord goes. And the reason this concept is kind of important is because your spine and your wrist and a lot of other parts of your body are kind of like a water hose. We flow fluid through our, our blood vessels and our lymphatic system and nerve, our nervous system. If it's, if it's crimped, it doesn't conduct as well and it causes pain. And if you, if you damage the tissue, you can cause swelling in any of those spaces. And that, that further restricts the fluid flow. And what I want you to do is picture, picture a hose, like you've been out, you're in the garden and you can't reach, reach the valve and you need to turn that water, water off. So you bend that hose, okay? And you crimp that hose. What happens in your body when you do that is it causes swelling. And this would be like a significant injury, okay? Now, once you straighten out that, that part, you're still gonna have the swelling that's gonna restrict the flow. And eventually, as you go on, that swelling will reduce and you'll get that, that flow of, of lymphatic parts and, and uh, blood flow and nerve conduction back. But the problem is anytime now that you, you injure or you even, even irritate that affected part, it's gonna go back to that exact same place and cause swelling again. So now you've got a limitation. So we really, what we really want to do to avoid that is to be in our default position as much as possible. And in default, I'll show you in, in the next slide. So what we want to do with good alignment is allow maximum capacity of your system, maximum space, which creates the best fluid travel and nerve conduction in your body, which reduces pain. Okay, so let's keep going through this one. Okay, so looking at the horizon for your neck and, and back, looking at the horizon keeps your head, neck, and back straight, and that allows you to have the, the maximum amount of flow. Next one, Jeff. It allows for easier breathing, and you'll see this in the picture. What I want everybody to do that's watching this, especially if you're watching this on a laptop, I want you to put your elbows on the table and put your, your hands kind of up next to your head. And then I want you to look down like you're looking at your, your laptop, okay? That wouldn't be great alignment. You don't have good peripheral vision. Your head, your head and neck are out of alignment. It's actually crimping the nerves that run down into your shoulders and wrists and arms. And it's really not a great position for you. Now what I want you to do is pull your head up and look at the horizon. And I want you to notice the difference about how much easier it is for you to breathe because now you're not curled up um, and how much better situational awareness you have because now you can see out to your periphery much easier. You're sitting up straighter, you feel better. It's gonna make you feel more confident. Standing up straight has been proven to feel, make you feel more confident in any interaction that you do. So these are all things that we wanna do in your default position. Jeff, if you could click the button one more time. This is what I'm talking about. The graphic illustrates sitting up straight with a blue and then sitting over looking like the demonstration we just did with the red. All right, if we could go to the next slide, please. Okay, let's do click on it one more time. Okay, so default position. The default position is your thighs, you're sitting in a chair, your thighs are parallel to your floor, your forearms are parallel to the floor when you're typing, and your eyes are looking at the horizon. And what that means is your computer monitor needs to be up at a position so that you look at the horizon most of the time. And you wanna be able to reach out again and touch, it needs to be close enough that you can touch that computer monitor, okay? Because that's gonna relax, that puts your eyes 
at the default focal length, which is the easiest for the little muscles in your eye to focus on, okay? So your arms, your arms are in that, that 90 degree, and while that may be cramped, it still allows enough blood flow and fluid flow through your arms that it can be comfortable and it's not gonna irritate the tissues and cause, cause any injury irritation, for lack of a better way to describe that. All right, the seat height. The seat height is important because you gotta get up high enough so that you can work on the desk, you can work at the, at the workstation that you're working at. Now, if you look at the other two pictures, those are distance pictures. Those are showing the layout of your workstation and where that equipment should be. If you look at the top right-hand diagram with the lady with the two green sticks, that's your primary task should be within that first 40 centimeters, okay? And the secondary task, like your, your telephone, if you've got a, a landline, your calculator, if you're not using it like a nine key, your stapler and things like that can be in that secondary area. That's safe for you to reach into, okay? The primary area is where you want everything that you're doing all the time to be in. And the reason this is important is if you're reaching beyond that secondary area, now you're reaching too far, you're putting, and if you try and pick up something, that can, that can damage the tissue in your shoulder, in your neck, and in your lower back. So we wanna keep that stuff close in our wheelhouse. If, if you listen to my back and lifting presentation, I talk about taking a gallon of fluid and holding it at your belly button. If you do that, you can pick up that gallon of fluid for 30 minutes without any real stress on your, on your body. But if you hold that gallon bottle of whatever the liquid is out at arm's length, you can hold it up for maybe about 60 seconds and you're gonna be sore because of the leverage effect on your joints and your soft tissue, okay? So that's what we're talking about with these rings of accessibility. All right, next slide, Jeff. Uh, let's click it one more time. There we go. All right, so if you look on the right, that's what a good office chair looks like. That is a commercial quality office chair with all the recommended adjustments. Now, does that mean everybody at this Everybody needs that office chair? No. And what I did was I listed the adjustments that you want, the features that you want in an office chair by order of priority. And the number one thing is you gotta get that seat height up and down to get your thighs parallel to the floor. And that will also allow you to adjust the workstation. You know, if you're short and you need to work on the desktop, we need to get that, that chair up so you can comfortably have your arms at a 90 degree angle, forearms parallel to the floor, working on that desktop, okay? If you're tall, if you're taller, you need the seat height. If you're more petite and you're working with a keyboard tray underneath the desk, we need to be able to get that chair down for you. Now, the next thing is the seat depth. And what I mean by that, if you look at number three on the, on the diagram on the left-hand side, Either the backrest moves in or out, or the seat pan itself moves in and out from the backrest. And why that's important, it's probably not important to people that are over five foot eight or nine. It's extremely important to people that are more petite than that. Because you need to be able to adjust that seat back to where it supports you, so you're not sliding off the front of the chair. Okay, you're actually using the, the backrest to support your back so you don't cause any additional problems with your back. Now the back height, this is a comfort thing. You're adjusting that back height so it matches the curvature of your spine and supports you appropriately. The arm height, the arm height's important because you wanna be able to get the arms out of the way so it's not interfering with the arm angle when you're typing or you're doing writing on top of a desk, desktop. All right, the back angle isn't that important. Um, that is, again, more of a comfort thing with you, and if you need help adjusting that, reach out to me via my email, and I can help you with that, or eventually we can set up a, an ergonomic assessment where I can come out and help you adjust your chair. Arm width is important if you're a little heavier, and then the seat angle, I would say, is not important. I'd really rather have, I'd rather somebody have a flat angle on their on their seat. There's very few instances where changing the pitch of your seat pan is helpful. 
Next slide, please. Okay, so here are the, some of the things that I'm, I'm talking about. If you look at the picture, the first picture over on the left with the lady in the, in the brown dress, her, her chair is really too high off the floor. She's trying to work on the desktop and she's really not tall enough and she doesn't have a, a footrest underneath that. And what that's doing is it's pulling her off the backrest so she's no longer getting any support for her back. And it's making her put all, a lot of her weight on her forearms and her wrists when she's working at that desk. That can lead to shoulder issues and it can lead to carpal tunnel, it can lead to a whole bunch of things. So really what we need to do is get that chair adjusted so that backrest fits her better and we need to get her lower so that her thighs are parallel to the floor when she's, she's seated, her feet are flat on the floor and she's supported by the chair, not her forearms on the desk. Now the middle picture is of a lady who's trying to work doing something that's too far away. The writing portion of her desk is off her center line and she's trying to reach out to that and that pulls her off the front of the chair and the chair has some issues as well. The, the last picture over on your right, are, I have in there because I wanna show the arms of the chair. If you see the arms, it won't let the chair push into the desk. If you're riding at the desk, that's really, really important. You want those, those arms to be able to get low enough so you can pull the chair into the desk and use the surface to write, okay? It's also helpful if you wanna push that chair out of the way because you need clearance around the back side of the chair when you stand up to move, leave your cubicle. All right, one of the other things I wanna point out, if we go back to the picture in the middle, the lady has fixed arms on those chairs, or on that chair. Those kinds of chairs are really designed with those fixed arms for conference tables, okay? They're not really designed as an eight hour work chair. They're designed to come into and sit at a meeting and then leave after 45 minutes or an hour. They're not an eight hour chair when you have arms like that. Okay, next slide, Jeff. Okay, so some of the other things. Are you twisted? And I don't mean mentally, I mean physically. So when we were talking about the hose, we talked about the bend and that slows down flow and can cause issues with inflammation and that kind of thing. But what we didn't talk about is if you twist that hose, it does the same thing. If you're Try looking out the car window to the right-hand side for an hour on a long drive and you'll find that your neck is sore after you do that. Well, it's the same thing at work. And if you're not setting up your computer monitor on your center line, so you're looking straight forward in a default position, you're gonna be sore at the end of the day. And if you do that long enough, you can actually cause damage to the tissues in your neck. All right, the next thing, are you blocked out of your workstation? I see this constantly when I'm doing the ergonomic assessment at the Office of Ed's workstations. People stuff stuff underneath their desk. I'm gonna talk about the distance, the real space that you need underneath the desk, but having things stored where your legs are supposed to go can, can throw you off, twist you a little bit, and cause issues with your neck and back. And then the third picture on the right is, do you really have enough space? If you've got, if you need to use that work surface on your desk, and you know, for writing and doing projects and that kind of stuff, and you have to use a computer, do we need to get you a second table? Do we need to look at other, other implements to help you get your work done? And that would be a question for me. I'd be happy to come out and evaluate your workstation, but you need to coordinate that with your supervisor. You know, approach them first, see if you can get a, an additional table or whatever equipment that you need to do your job comfortably. And if that doesn't work, then reach out to Mr. Ramsey and he can reach out to me and we can come out and do an evaluation and see if there's something else that we can do. Now, one of the things I'd like to point out about this is ergonomic stuff is not an acute thing. If you don't adjust your workstation today, you're not gonna go to the hospital tomorrow with an injury. It's gonna take a long time for those in, for tissue jam, damage to progress to the point where we have to really treat it. So don't panic if your, your workstation doesn't work, look perfect. It's something that we're gonna work on over time. Okay, next slide, please. 
What kind of space do you need? Click it one more time, Jeff. Okay, so these are my two diagrams. I couldn't find, couldn't find one, so I actually had to draw one out on the right-hand side. And we're talking about two things, how much space you need. I'm gonna start on the right-hand side on my hand-drawn diagram. And I really wanna focus on the 30-inch space underneath the, the computer monitor when you pull your chair into the desk. Most chairs are between 26 to 28 inches wide. In order for them to be able to get underneath the desk and get you positioned appropriately, you really need 30 inches of space for your legs, unless you have a keyboard tray that pulls out and you, can, you don't even have to pull up underneath the desk. Then you can cut it down to about 24 inches, maybe 26, depending on the, the width of your keyboard and mouse combination. Desks, commercial desks in the United States are generally 29 and a half inches high. That is a standard, that's what we build everything to. That is for the middle of the range. I'm five foot nine, um, and for both men and women, if you combine both of them, I am average man. I am what everything, all office equipment is really built for. If you're shorter than that, or excuse me, more petite, height challenged, however you want to define it, um, then there are other things we need to do. If you're gonna work on the, on the desktop, maybe we need to get a foot rest so we can get that chair up higher and you can comfortably work on that, that desktop. If you're taller than that, we may need to split, especially if you're over six foot five, six foot four, six foot five, seems to be the breakover. If you're taller than that, we probably need to space your desk up using some kind of riser underneath the desk. Now, the picture on the left is space that you actually need in your workstation. Some of you have only 36 inches from the, the table edge to the back of your workstation. And that really isn't enough space, unless you're really tiny. What do, the reason for that is, a, a, a chair, an office chair, is generally, I'd say 28 inches in depth as well as width. And if you only have 36 inches, when you push the chair back to the back of your, back of your workstation, that leaves you only 10 inches to stand up in. Now again, if you're petite, that may be enough space. But even somebody my size, 10 inches really isn't enough to, space to get up and slide around my chair and get out without having some kind of tripping hazard. And that's where we go back to slip strips and falls. What the Americans with Disability Act requires is 48 inches in this type of workspace. And that's so you can get a wheelchair in there and you can turn around with 12 inches underneath the desk. Um, if you're gonna have people walking back behind you, you really need about 60 inches of space in your workstation. And that's kind of a critical thing. It's not required. There's no law that says that anywhere. This is a best practice and something that we would try and get in place so you don't have a slip, trip, and fall incident. Next slide, please. Hey, Kyle, before we move on, there was a, a question in the chat about um, laptop and correct placement for the laptop, raising the screen height, pulls the keyboard off. Do you have a quick suggestion on that? Yes, absolutely. Get a... And I have, I have examples. Get an accessory keyboard, a Bluetooth keyboard for that laptop, and get that laptop up where that screen is at your eye height and you're looking at the horizon. Now, how you do that, you can get, you can purchase a riser. I can, I can send you links with examples at Home Depot. Jeff has, has gotten those in the past. Or you can do something as simple as stacking a bunch of books together. And that may be 12 inches of books or more. You can put that laptop up on a shelf. Um, I, if I could turn, turn my, my computer around, I could show you what I've done. I actually have an adjustable shelf that goes up and down and puts my monitor at the correct height for me. And th that's what I've done for my home office. But it is the same kind of thing at, at, at work. Does hey Kyle, this is Nan. Yes ma'am. So you do have a few things in the chat there, like, like he was oh, yeah. saying. And um, I'm wondering if you do, you're, you're repeating on Friday, maybe you don't need to just repeat, maybe you need to move on to more of your stuff. Everybody seems to have questions and okay. Um, yeah. on Friday you can do whatever. Yeah, we're running, we're running 
Um, Almost five so minutes. Our, up to our okay. session, there are about five minutes left. So well, it may be there. good to, to, yeah, if, if people are, are here looking to, to join on Friday to continue to expand on it, please join us okay. Friday. We can do that. We can switch this up. That's easy. I got plenty of material, believe me. <laughs> can you, right. can you, Check out the chat for what you have today or? Okay, yeah, I sure can. Uh, slides are great. My home needs some rearranging. Yep, all of us. Is it important for your chair to have an armrest? No, it is not important for your chair to have an armrest. Um, it's just for convenience. Um, yes, Copy of the we already talked about making sure that this PowerPoint is, is available to everybody in the Office of Ed. Wow, everything's going off at once. My doorbell's <laughs> ringing too. Um, if you want me to come out and look over your workstation, you really need to let your supervisor know and then let Jeff Ramsey know. He's the one that actually calendars the requests. If, if not Jeff Ramsey, then uh, Sheree Barnes and her group over in Human Resources, they can do it as well. The request has to come through them. Yes. And understand that, that while I won't out you on anything, if I can avoid it, if there are <laughs> questions and you're asking me things that affect the district, I work for the office of it. I don't, I'm not like a practitioner. I don't have, I have to say something if I see something. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, so, the, so to expand on that, Kyle, the best way to set up an ergo evaluation is um, either, to work through your HR tech. Okay. Oh, okay. Sorry. Not through you anymore. That's no, right. No, it's, 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 it's through it's the nice HR to, to copy me on that request as well. So I'm kind of aware of what's going on. Um, but your HR tech will be the one that would set it up with Kyle and coordinate it all um, to get it going. So that would definitely be the first place to start. Understand that I'm buried right now though. And I've got kind of a two, at least a two week lead time just to give you the heads up. Okay. <laughs> it's busy. Everybody's coming back to school at our at our all our other districts, and we're doing just a ton of of ergonomic assessments. Um, links, uh, you can okay. So the PowerPoint will be available after this. I'm not sure how Jeff is going to post it, and my email address is is included in that title block at the beginning of the PowerPoint presentation. Um, and then Jeff Ramsey is. What is it, Jeff Ramsey at tcoe.org, right? Yeah, jeff.ramsey at tcoe.org. Okay, and then years ago, I used to have a chair in the office that was kind of inclined where you had a spot for your knees and of course, a sitting area. It was great for my back. Are those okay to use? Okay, we don't recommend them any longer because they don't really support your back. They do help you develop your core, but the issue that we have with those in the ball chair is we've just had too many slip strips and falls. And if you break your wrist at work, Keenan is a little duck that pays. And we don't want to see that. So no, I'm not going to recommend those. Um, you, can, you can discuss with your own practitioner and you can discuss with your own staff if they're approved for use. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let you. I, if, I, if I were king, I wouldn't let you because a traditional chair is a better way to go for that. If you're gonna work out and you do yoga, we encourage that, but it needs to be on your own time, probably not at work, okay? okay. All right, how am I for time now? That takes us right, right to the end. We're down to our, our last minute. So I think what we could do maybe is if, if everyone's interested in continuing this, we can um, continue Friday uh, maybe we start about wrists and fingers and Perfect. go through that. And then if we have some new people on Friday, then we can kind of go to the beginning and kind of summarize the beginning part for them that are joining on Friday. All right. Well, thank you very much, you guys. Yes. Hope thank you. Have you. a safe and healthy day. Thank you for attending. Um, we'll make sure this PowerPoint gets out um, probably next week. And hopefully we'll see you in the Friday session to continue talking about ergonomics. Have a good yeah, afternoon. Yeah, bring your friends, bring your friends. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, you gonna stick around for a minute? Yes, sir. Thank you. Jeff, I'm gonna...